And I'm going to ask myself, oh, hey, is an algebra trigger a mixture of stuff? Well, it's a mixture of things because I've got some algebra and an exponent. Well, so far, the thing we've been, that's been working out pretty well for us is a u substitution. So I'm going to look at this and ask myself, does the derivative of one part show up somewhere else in the problem? Well, there are kind of only two parts. There's the x and the e to the x. So let's just check really quick. Well, if u is equal to x, then du is equal to dx. Fun fact, this is never a u substitution. All that would do is swap your letters out. It doesn't actually do anything towards simplifying the problem. Next thing we could try, u could be e to the x. But the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, meaning I'd need another e to the x somewhere in the problem. So this, as a u substitution, also doesn't help. We need a different technique for integrating this. Um, now, we're going to zoom back to 17a for a second. Product rule. If I had an f times a g and I took the derivative, there are a bunch of different ways that you can organize this, but I usually write this as f prime g plus fg prime. I'm going to switch the letters up on this instead of f and g. I'm going to use u and v because those are the more typical letters that we use for integration by parts. And I'll be honest, I don't remember off the top of my head whether Gorski uses f and g or u and v. Sorry. By Monday, we'll have figured it out. I'm going to go with u and v because that's what our book uses. So if I have a u and v and I take the derivative, I would get u prime v plus u v prime. Now the other way to write that u prime part that, we've, that we use when we're talking about integrals is as a differential. So I'm going to swap out that u prime v, and I'm actually going to swap the order on that and call that v du. And over here, I'm going to leave that as a u dv. And on this side, I have u times v prime. The theme of 17b so far has kind of been, well, we were doing derivatives in 17a. We're doing antiderivatives in 17b. So if I take the antiderivative of this entire equation, on the left-hand side, I'll just be left with u times v. And over here, taking the antiderivative, I can write that as an integral. V du, integral of u dv. Think I got all those pieces right? So this is an equation, which means I can move things around in this equation. And the way I'm going to move things around is I'm going to take this piece and subtract it from both sides. So that over here on the left, I have uv minus the integral of v du. And over here, I have u, oh, I have the integral of u dv. Now this, it turns out, is a really nifty formula that's gonna help us out in a pinch for certain types of integrals. And, we're call, and we call this the integration by parts formula. And usually we flip the order around on this and we say the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Or as I mentioned before, I remember this as ultraviolet voodoo. Um, so when I get stuck and I have to use integration by parts, I'm swapping out one integral that I don't know how to work with for some ultraviolet voodoo. Let's apply that to this problem over here. When it comes to integration by parts, 
the biggest thing that we have to figure out is I'm looking at this problem and I have an x and an e to the x and a dx. And of all of that, I have to figure out which part of that is the u and which part of that is a dv. And while the technique I'm about to show isn't perfect, it does work at least 98% of the time. So I think it's worth talking about. And that is, we're gonna choose u in the order of what sucks the most to integrate. So first, we're gonna list out all the things that we know how to take derivatives of, like logs, inverse trig, algebra, trig, and exponentials. Now, most of the time in 17b, we don't often have to worry about the inverse trig, which leaves us with this nice acronym of late. And when I'm doing integration by parts, I'm thinking about what do I have and who comes first in the word late? Coming back over to here, I have algebra, which is anything that looks like x's raised to powers. I'm calling that algebra. So I've got algebra and I've got exponentials. A comes first in the word late, which means x is what I'm gonna set equal to u to do my integration by parts. I'm gonna have u is equal to x. And that means if I'm gonna use the formula, everything else in that integral has to be dv. u is equal to dx and dv is equal to e to the x dx. To use my formula, I now have the u part figured out, but I still need the v and the du part in order to plug into the formula. So again, I'm kind of thinking about this, this is my vocabulary list, so that I can translate things into the formula. Well, I've got a u, and I'm gonna take the derivative to get my du, which is equal to dx. And I have a dv, so I need to take the antiderivative to get back to a v. Well, if e to the x is somebody's derivative, that somebody is e to the x which means I can swap out this integral that I didn't really know what to do with for u times v minus the integral of v du. When you do integration by parts, you're trading one integral for another one, secretly for two because to go from dv to v, I had to find an antiderivative. So every time you're doing integration by parts, it's not like a time saver because we actually end up integrating more, but it hopefully takes something we don't know how to integrate and turns it into something that we do. And now I'm looking at x e to the x minus, well, the integral of e to the x is e to the x plus a constant. And that is going to be my final answer.